I expect fearless competence. Fearless. How many of you have um, brought code up on a screen? And you look at that code, say, oh, it's a little ugly, I should clean it. And your next thought is, I'm not touching it. Because <laughs> you know if you touch it, you will break it. And if you break it, it's yours. <laughs> so you walk away. That's not going to be me. I'm not going to be the one. That's a fear reaction. You fear what you created. And if you fear it, you cannot clean it. If you cannot clean it, the only thing that can happen to it is that it must rot. It must get worse and worse and worse. Why does code keep getting worse and worse and worse? Because we fear. Remember when you got your first bit of code to work, the joy you felt at being the master over that computer and how you wanted that feeling again. Oh, I'm going to be a programmer and make these machines work. You ruled it and now it rules you. It's all changed around. You fear what you have created. You've lost control of it out of this fear. It now controls you. It dominates you. You react to it. You no longer are the master. What do we do about this? Because it's completely unacceptable. It is the hallmark of unprofessionalism and sheer irresponsibility to have lost control of the thing we created to the extent that we fear any action towards it. What do we do about this? Well, imagine that you had a button you could push, a little magic button. You push this button and some lights blink and shortly thereafter there's a little ding, ding and a green light lights up. And that green light means that everything works. And you trust it. You trust the green light. Everything works. Now look at your screen. There's code on that screen. It's dirty. And you think, oh, I should clean this code. And your next thought is, well, maybe I'll just change that one little variable. I'll change that one little variable. Its name is wrong. I'll give it a better name. Hit the button. Ah, oh, green. Huh. Worked. OK, um, this function's a little big. Maybe I should split it into two functions. Hit the button. Ah, green, good, okay. Um, ooh, this function should probably be moved over to that module over there. Hit the button. Red, oh no, put it back. <laughs> oh, I see, I did it a little wrong. Okay, move it over here. Hit the button, green, ah. If you had that button, you could clean the code. If you could clean the code, then the code would always get better. If the code always got better, you could make it easy to change. If you could make it easy to change, you could go fast. That button is the key to everything. How do you get that button? Where can you buy it? Where do you get that button from? How many of you are practicing test-driven development? Two, two, two. Ooh, look at this. We got um, not quite 10%, and we do have a little of this going on. Test-driven development. Test-driven development is a discipline. A discipline, the goal of which is to give you that button. If you were practicing test-driven development from the beginning, from the start of your career, every system you would ever work upon would have had that button. To start practicing test-driven development now is going to be difficult because you have systems that don't have tests and weren't designed to be tested and so writing tests for them will be difficult. But that's not to say that it's impossible and that's not to say it's a bad goal, just difficult. It may take you some time to get that button. But now think of what that button can do for you, what it can do for your team, what it can do for your company and it makes it almost absolutely imperative to get that button. What is the right level of code coverage? Test coverage. When you run tests, 
how many, what percent of the code should be covered by those tests? 100. It's the only reasonable answer, 100%. It's also an unachievable answer. You can't ever get to 100%. But we are used to asymptotic goals, goals that you always approach but never quite get. Have you ever tried losing weight? <laughs> no? Asymptotic goal. But it doesn't mean you stop trying. Right? You keep pushing that number higher and higher, 95%, 96%, 96.5%. You get it high enough so that when that green light goes on, you are willing to trust the green light. Has anybody got a test suite where you're on it, and it passes, and everybody kind of goes, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because you know there are things that weren't tested. You know there are big gaps in the test suite. And so the fact that the test passes does not change your behavior. You can make no reasonable decision based on your test suite passing. And that makes the passing useless. When the test suite fails, it at least tells you that something went wrong. But when it passes, it tells you nothing. That's bad. The passing of the test suite should change your behavior. It should allow you to make certain decisions that you would not make otherwise. 